What the smeggin hell was that? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the greatest curry filled hologram crammed intergalactic episodes from the brilliant TV series that is Red Dwarf. Hey, things are looking up already! <laughs> Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. A series spanning 30 years and counting, it's become one of the most loved sci-fi shows around, with cult characters just as ludicrous as its plot lines are ridiculous. But which episodes reign supreme? Starbug, start your engines. Number 10, Backwards. Wormholes, black holes, and even white holes are a common sight in Red Dwarf, so the guys should be used to a quick time jump. Because that is quite obviously a blue giant about to go supernova. That is a time hole. <laughs> but something in this episode isn't quite right. Mainly, the 1993 they've travelled back to is backwards. Boxes fall onto trucks, guns suck bullets out of people, deodorant keeps you sweaty, and when you go to the toilet, well... <laughs> We've got to stop them. <laughs> An excellent example of the crew interacting with a shape-shifting environment, Backwards is packed full of memorable quotes and physical comedy, including a particularly satisfying bar brawl that acts as a clean-up montage. It's not a barroom brawl, it's a barroom tidy! Unrumble! <laughs> Number 9, Marooned. In what is essentially a glorified bottle episode, Marooned sees Rimmer and Lister stranded on an icy planet, with only each other and the bitter cold for company. Still snowing, is it? Unlike many other crazed and varied episodes in the series, Marooned focuses more on the relationship between the two unlikely friends as they reminisce over a burning barrel and fight for survival. It's just one of those things you always remember. <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> Of course, unforgettable witty dialogue is sprinkled throughout, but the sheer stripped-back nature of it reminds us that it's the great writing and razor-sharp characters that make this series so epic, and not necessarily its deep space setting. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. You've made a supreme sacrifice, you know that? <laughs> a supreme sacrifice. Number 8, The Inquisitor. On the surface, this episode looks a little heavy, religious, and, well, downright intense for something typical Red Dwarf. The famed Inquisitor, a simulant with a god complex, visits Red Dwarf and acts as judge, jury, and executioner to those who have led worthless lives, so our crew are sitting ducks. Prove to me you are worthy of the honor of life, or drink deeply from the well of nothingness for all eternity. I hate these either or questions. Forcing them to reflect on their own existence, we get to see them try and worm their way out of certain death, with the most impressive candidate undoubtedly being Rimmer. Ah! What's that in the corner? It's the Archangel Gabriel! Well, that's me converted. I'm a new man. Hallelujah. And even though, as the Inquisitor's case builds, we see he's got a point, we can't help but love the guys and all of their dysfunctional ways. Sir, I am programmed to relinquish my life. That's why the Mechanoid 4000 series was voted Android of the Year five years running. <laughs> Number 7, Queeg. Ever had a computer virus, a narky school teacher, or an annoying older brother? This is kind of like that. With long-serving Red Dwarf computer Holly on the blink, the Dwarfers turn to backup system Queeg 500 to help run the ship, unknowing of the system's rigorous ways of keeping crew members in check. Holly's got an IQ of 6,000! Yeah, right on. Is that what he told you? Well, what is it then? It has a 6 in it, but it's not 6,000. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? 6. Played brilliantly by an intimidating Charles Organs, the guys do everything from cleaning floors to running laps, which makes life on board agony. Gotta help us, Hull. Yeah, Queeg has got to go. Look what he's done to my cuticles. The man is a maniac. In comparison, the ditzy Holly starts to look better than ever, and we get to watch a grueling chess game as the lovable computer fights his way back to the top spot. But Holly knows what he's doing. Don't worry. Queen to Rook 8. Checkmate. That's an illegal move. Oh, sorry, queens don't move like that. I was thinking of poker. <laughs> Number six, better than life. With virtual reality creeping into our lives more and more, never has this episode been so on point. In this outing, the crew delve into the virtual reality program, Better Than Life, to live out their deepest fantasies, be it beautiful women or, in Lister's case, a caviar vindaloo and rare wine in a pint glass. And yours was the fish, sir. <laughs> What are you doing? I always do this when someone gives me food. 
Of course, Rimmer and his neurotic personality ruins it for the rest of them as he conjures up an emotionally aggressive mirage of his dad, a mortgage, and deadly ants that are about to eat his face. My brain's rebelled. <laughs> it just won't accept nice things happening to me. This episode is littered with loads of little gems and one-liners that have had viewers tuning into repeats for years. You've ruined this, Rimmer! We're gonna die! We're gonna die! And it's all my fault! Ah! Ah! Number 5. White Hole Time loops are a recurring theme in Red Dwarf. We see it in the episode Future Echoes, but never quite as hilariously executed as in White Hole. So where does this leave us? It leaves us floating aimlessly in space, with no navigation and a rapidly diminishing emergency power supply. With time spewing back into the universe and resulting in multiple time loops at seemingly random intervals, we are treated to comical and at times frustrating conversations between the crew. This episode also sees the birth of a stubborn talking toaster and cat's unforgettable, so what is it line? So what is it? <laughs> Only joking. A dwarf classic that will have you frantically sketching timelines in a notepad, you can't help but think about it when you get deja vu. Wait, what just happened? I should like to take this opportunity of saying that you are the most obnoxious, trumped up, farty <laughs> little smeghead that has ever been my misfortune to encounter. Number four, Polymorph. Ah yes, Polymorph, Alien meets The Thing meets Red Dwarf. How do you stop a shape-shifting mutant that can turn into anything? With great difficulty. Whether it's morphing into a snake, giant monster, or Lister's undies, the Polymorph makes for interesting TV. Well, I can't say I'm totally shocked. <laughs> Feeding on negative emotions, the creature changes the personalities of our crew members, making Crichton a defiant teenager and Cat a scruffy bum. Cat, let's have your contribution. Come on. Hey, don't ask me my opinion. I'm nobody. Just I'm not here. One of the most memorable monsters in the series, it reminds us that in space, you can never really trust anyone or anything. Alpha Betty Spaghetti! <laughs> <laughs> Number 3. Gunmen of the Apocalypse Who doesn't love a western? On a mission to cure Crichton of a computer virus, Lister, Rimmer and Kat enter the mechanoid's subconscious, which just so happens to look like the ruthless streets of a spaghetti western. The Apocalypse Boys is here. He's asking for you, Sheriff. I'll be right out. Brimming with film references and colourful characters, including Brett Riverboat, Knife Extraordinaire, and Dangerous Dan McGrew, who just wants some ginger ale, we get to watch the Red Dwarf comedy formula play out in one of cinema's most memorable settings. A man beans up in the hat of Bear Strangler McGee. He's either mighty brave or mighty stupid. Which are you, boy? Sorry, what were the choices again? Sci fi mixed with a western mixed with comedy? What could be better? Number 2. Quarantine Just when you thought Rimmer couldn't get any more irritating, he contracts the hollow virus, puts on a checkered dress, and starts terrorising the crew. After returning from a trip in Starbug, the guys are sent to quarantine by Rimmer, who seems to be acting a little odd. I'm sitting here wearing a red and white checked gingham dress and army boots. I think that's on a miss. As the virus eats away at Rimmer's sanity, he defers to his assistant in crime, Mr. Flibble to make life even harder for his crewmates, cutting off their oxygen and trying to zap them with his hex vision. It's a good job Lister had access to the luck virus to get them out of the tight spot. We can't possibly do that. <laughs> Who'd clear up the mess? Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. You have a connoisseur, Chip? Just because I look like Herman Munster's stuntman doesn't mean to say I can't appreciate art, sir. I shall return with the feast. Tonight's scheduled feature has been cancelled and replaced by a special live pay-per-view event brought to you courtesy of Karate TV. <laughs> How long was I in stasis? Well, I couldn't release you until the radiation reached a safe background level. How long? Three million years. <laughs> Three million years! I've still got that library book. Number one, back to reality. What if Red Dwarf was all a virtual reality computer game, and Lister, Rimmer, Cat and Crichton were the players? Q. Back to reality. During a dangerous investigation of a wreckage, the guys suddenly wake up in a simulator, where they've apparently spent the last four years playing the game Red Dwarf. I'm not a hologram. I'm half human. What the hell's happened to my teeth? Now back to their real lives, they have to come to terms with who they are, be it a fascist police chief like Lister, 
homeless rimmer or goofball cat. Twain Dibley! <laughs> it's yet another example of writers Rob Grant and Doug Naylor creating another compelling stage for great characters to perform on, and it reminds us that it doesn't matter where they are, what timeline they are in, the Dwarfers will always be our favourite space comedy crew. Hello, for the 3,000th time you're hallucinating, can anyone hear me? Uh oh, speed bumps. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.